With a flurry of well-placed uppercuts, Conor McGregor tasted victory just 67 seconds into his UFC debut. His post-fight interview was almost as memorable, and with that, a new UFC star was born. He is Ireland's best hope for MMA glory, and he's been busy since that unforgettable April night. We journeyed to McGregor's native Dublin for a closer look at the featherweight sensation. Conor McGregor has just been on fire over in Ireland and in the UK. If you want a fun guy to watch, he's your guy. Out of Conor's 12 wins, 11 on knockouts, and he almost did it again! Look at that on the cut. Someone is calling out for knockout of the night. I was walking as a plumber, had an okay little trade for myself. I hated it, and I quit one day. Me and my and dad were worried about me, and I didn't know what, what I was going to do with my life. Well, I don't do the cooking. There's going to be no extravagant meals today. Over time, they just saw, they saw what I saw. They saw what I was showing them. You know what I mean? I was showing them that I have something here, you know what I mean? I mean, little knee stands and I'll take something from it. You know to I mean? get him to go in the morning, wake him up in the morning and get him up to go was an absolute nightmare. The, the, the boxing kind of gave him a complete different outlook. One of his early fights, they had a stand-in who was an Eastern European guy. And I saw this guy coming out, ex-Special Forces from Russia. And then Connor came out. And I knew at that moment, and that was a that was a uh, defining moment for me. Boy become man. And when he won the fight, I knew that was it. That's what he was going to be, you know. I was literally for the whole of my childhood the opponent. Like I would be sitting, <laughs> minding your own business, watching telly, flicking through the channels, and he'd come in and be like Conor McGregor, and he'd like bounce off me, and then I'd like get me legs up in the air and be like leg leg. <laughs> Have you heard any more about having to go away? Um, about two months after I met Connor, he uh, had his first MMA fight. I always saw, even from then, the dedication that he put in, and we'd be driving home from his gym sessions and listen to the music, and he'd be saying, no, I'm going to make it, and talk about his dreams. And we just always knew this this would come, so it's, it's great to see it come now into real life. So. I was always a small kid, I was always the smaller guy, you know what I mean? So I wasn't picked on, but there was a few incidents like that. I just, as the little guy, you know what I mean? I just wanted to be able to defend myself, so I started doing it so people wouldn't say anything, you know what I mean? So people just leave me alone. And then it just took over. Then it just became an obsession. Ireland has a long history of combat sports stars, you know? We've always been known to have a, have a scrap and fight to the end, you know what I mean? So I'm no different. We've been tight for seven years and, and we'd always be talking about different fights and it could be 2 a.m. and he'd message me about a video about two gorillas wrestling. And he was amazed by this and sent me the video and was talking about it. See the way they're moving and what, do you think we could do that? And you know, he's got a, just a real fascination about, about how the human body works. And to be the first guy leading the way for mixed martial arts in this country, it fills me. That that alone gets me to the gym. That alone makes me work harder than, than, than other people, you know. You're never there. You know, I'm not, you know what I'm saying, oh, I, I got here. I'm never anywhere, you know, there is no end to this. I'm gonna just keep going. There is no, success is never final, you know what I mean? You just keep going. You ever hear the, t the saying, like, it's hard to get up and run when you're wearing silk underwear? As if to say, like, you know, I've made money, i made some money, it's hard to actually get up and motivate. But I've got a foolproof plan. When you get your money, spend every penny on it. Blow it all. Until you're actually broke come the next fight. So you're just as hungry as you were before the first one. So I'm in the process of blowing every penny of that. Every penny of it, yeah? Something about a good suit. <laughs>
I don't know, a good suit just, you know, you can take on you can take on the world in, in a good in a good suit, you know? You know what I mean? I'm hungry again, I'm starving again, I need to get in there and get that money and get that bonus, you know. There's, there's some good guys that could get some good finishes, but I know for a fact I'm gonna get one of them bonuses again. Too many, too many bums are walking in to these press conferences and doing all their interviews in their stupid little shorts, their stupid little t-shirts with all the stupid on it, you know, they don't look good. I walk in in a suit, diggy bow, handkerchief, cufflinks, you know what I mean? Look professional. <laughs> <laughs> What's a camp? You take a set group of people, go to a certain location, and you're building up this big event, this one event, you know, you're putting it on a pedestal that's not. This to me is just another day. All right, first two, go at it. Let's do it. I'm gonna walk in there and do what I do every single day. You know what I mean? That's it. Just have fun. Try and learn. Try and try new stuff. You know, practice new things, and that's that's the way we we, we approach it. <laughs> it was exactly what I said it was gonna be. I said I was gonna get here. People said I wasn't. I said I was gonna put the guy away early. People said I wasn't. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Keep proving people wrong. I'm proving myself right. Boston, the long lost Irish city, you know, they're all crazy Irish as well. You know, that's gonna inspire me, that's gonna spur me on to train harder and put on a, put on a show for the city or the people of Boston. And...